Your first thoughts uh, on India's G20 victory and the way India has made its mark on the global economic landscape with this achievement. I think it's a it's a historic moment. It's a time. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, the the Abrit Kal has started, and uh, within the Abrit Kal, we are uh, a, a few years in, uh, and uh, I think the next few decades are going to see a historic uh, rise of India uh, in terms of growth, in terms of uh, removal of poverty, uh, in terms of uh, you know our digital public infrastructure. Uh, taking, making it roads and uh, having a huge amount of financial inclusion. And I think it's one of those events uh, which is very rare for the whole world. And at that stage, to host the G20 and uh, get 100% consensus, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great time for India. It just signals, I know some of these things are, are notional, nominal, but uh, it signals uh, a time for India where, uh, you know, India is... Uh, considered and respected as a leading nation and the one that is likely to bring the largest impact on the world in the next 20 years to come. Mr. Daya, what can India's fintech world really teach the world about financial inclusion now? I think financial inclusion, what we have achieved in the last few years with identification as in Aadhaar, with the payments as in UPI, uh, and I think uh, what we will uh, achieve in the coming future essentially means our data is safe. It is not in private hands. And at the same time, almost the entire country, I would say, uh, unless unless somebody is, uh, is really inhibited for some very peculiar reasons, I would say more than 80% of the country is now using that digital infrastructure. That is what financial inclusion is. On the rails of this, you will see, and you are already seeing a lot of lending happening. I think the next phase is to make this digital infrastructure ubiquitous. Uh, access, uh, like what's happening in the UPI now, right? So uh, UPI started off with, uh, uh, you know, everybody having to use a few large apps for all their payments, etc. But now UPI has an API layer by which any uh, app, any website can use the UPI directly. And I think that is really the change because that is when millions of people can use it. Uh, till till that happens, to some extent, uh, you know, things will be either controlled by a few private parties or uh, or something of that sort. So I think uh, it's a it's a great phase where uh, and, and it's not just in India; it's happening in a few other countries. I'm sure many countries will develop their digital infrastructure, and some will leverage each other's. I think it's also a great time when countries start having interoperability of these digital infrastructures. So that, you know, one country's digital infrastructure talks to another country's digital infrastructure because that is essentially the dream of having one global digital infrastructure.